this rally so important? Well, this is the first anti-war demonstration in the post-Bush era. Bush is gone. Bush was synonymous with war, occupation, colonialism. But it's not just Bush. We can see that the occupation of Iraq is continuing. Uh, the President ba Obama has promised at least three more years of occupation. He used carefully uh, coded language to leave open the possibility of extending that beyond uh, 2011. And they're escalating the war in Afghanistan, another colonial war. Also, we are here to stand with the Palestinian people, demanding an end to USA to Israel. And I also note that the march is going to go by these arms makers, these, these outfits that are making tons and millions and billions of dollars on, on these conflicts. Well, these are the merchants of death. Boeing, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, KBR. These corporate executives make literally hundreds of millions of dollars each and every year. And what do they produce? Mass weapons, weapons of mass destruction. They produce suffering. Right now, the people of this country, 20 million of them are unemployed or underemployed. Nine million are either in foreclosure or so seriously delinquent in their mortgage payment that they could be in foreclosure. We don't want a trillion dollars a year spent for death and destruction to, for the enrichment of these war contractors. That's why we're marching. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, what is your name? Medea Benjamin with Code Pink. And Medea, why is it important for you to be here today? It's important to be here today because the war in Iraq isn't over. There's still over 140,000 troops there. Uh, Obama's called for them to come home, but a timeline that's way too stretched out, and still perhaps tens of thousands of re residual forces and perhaps U.S. bases staying there, and tens of thousands of U.S. contractors. And then we have the war in Afghanistan, that he is uh, sending more troops there, so we've got to put a lot of attention there to say that war is not a good war. It's not a winnable war. And I just came back from Gaza. So there's another issue, which is the U.S. is giving three billions of dollars every year of our taxpayer money that we need at home to the Israeli military to use to kill and maim and oppress the people of Palestine and most recently in Gaza. So there's a lot of issues that we still have to struggle for if we want to live in a country that uses diplomacy instead of war. Bray. I am the executive director of the Muslim American Society Freedom Foundation. And why is it important for you to be here today at this rally? What's important for me to be here today because as an American, I don't want my tax dollars to continue to fund death and destruction in the Middle East, in Muslim countries, or anywhere on the planet Earth. I indeed want to see us in the 21st century to move towards uh, trying to resolve conflict without violence, without war. I'm here because I know that the same crooks who has taken American working people's money and now that their, their savings are gone, they're homeless, some of them, and, 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 and destitute, without jobs, these same crooks, these same robber barons are also intricately involved with the military and industrial complex that gives us phony wars like the war in Iraq for oil and for other forms of resources and things of that nature. I'm here as an American to say that I want my nation to be true to its principles of liberty and justice for all. And what's your name? Deborah Sweet. And what organization are you with, Deborah? I'm, I'm the director of the World Can't Wait. And why are you here today at this rally that's going to go over to the Pentagon? This is the first rally on an anniversary of the Iraq War under a new President Obama. And we're sending a message that we're, we demand the end of occupations and torture for empire. This rebranding of the same war on terror that's carrying forth the same illegitimate, unjust, immoral occupations of Iraq, now spreading it to Afghanistan, and even into Pakistan is completely unacceptable to the people of the world. And we're here to send a message that we don't think that American lives are more important than people's lives around the rest of the world. And we want this occupation over. Thanks so much, Deb. Sure. Uh, now, Mike, what organization are you with? Uh, Veterans for Peace. And were you in Iraq or uh, Vietnam? Uh, I served during the Vietnam War, I was a Navy hospital corpsman and uh, worked at a Navy hospital for two or three years, taking care of the guys who came back. Now, Mike, going back to 2002, I know you've been around opposing the war in Iraq. Marty, How concerned are you today that we're in the sixth year it, of it, plus they're going to have all this, okay, more troops going to yeah. Afghanistan? Uh, well, 
if this is a withdrawal, it's the uh, slowest, most incomplete withdrawal in history. And we've just got to keep the pressure on uh, the White House to make sure that we get out of Iraq and get out of Afghanistan. Now, one of the reasons that uh, Barack Obama got elected was because millions of people wanted these wars stopped, period. Didn't want to have a two and a half year stretched out production. Now, I am, we're coming up now on the sixth anniversary of the Iraq War. Back in March of 2003, you were in the State Department. You disagree what was going on and you resigned. So now how do you feel about looking at this thing today? Well, here we are six years later and that war in Iraq still going on. We still have 140,000 U.S. military troops and 160,000 U.S. civilian contract workers there. We have uh, a fourth of the population of Iraq that is uh, displaced uh, refugees now. Uh, the, the services for the Iraqis are incredibly uh, horrible. Uh, the United States destroyed the infrastructure structure and is not rebuilt it. Uh, I am very concerned that the Obama administration, by prolonging the length of time that the U.S. forces are there, granted, there's, it's a shorter time period than George Bush would have had, but it's still much, much too long for the United States to be having combat troops there, and then the residual force of 50,000 people that would stay behind, plus we don't know what's going to happen with the 160,000 civilian contractors and the 14 mega bases that are little American cities big American cities there. So there's a lot that we are concerned about on the Obama approach to Iraq. I wish uh, we would consider removing many more of our combat forces and other forces much earlier than it's current time for. What is your name? Bill Marlow. Mara Verhaden-Hillier. And what group are you with, Mara? I'm a co-founder and attorney with the Partnership for Civil Justice. What's the latest status on these fines being imposed by the D.C. government on the Answer Coalition for posting flyers around town? The, the government has engaged in un, a completely unprecedented attack on the Answer Coalition and basically on all grassroots groups in D.C. by fining the Answer Coalition, at this point, I think more than $10,000 just in the last few weeks for putting up First Amendment protected flyers and posters and handing them out around D.C. They're finding them for what are lawfully posted posters. They don't find the politicians, they don't find the corporate promoters, but they're finding grassroots activists. And the only thing that grassroots groups have, anti-war organizations have, to get the word out are flyers and you know traditional forms of communication like that. We don't own the corporate media. Now, in addition for the fines being draconian, they're also discriminatory then. They, they don't do it to other political groups. They don't do it to somebody brings a circus in or a play or, or whatever. They, you don't see them going, you know, getting fines slapped on. Well, you don't see it around election season when you see politicians like Mayor Fenty of Washington, D.C. and everyone on the council slapping their signs on every inch of Washington. Many of those are not lawfully posted, not compliant with the law. But the law itself is also unconstitutionally written. It has certain requirements for political speech that's for grassroots democratic action like a demonstration or a meeting that isn't applied to political speech that's campaign that says you know if you go to the election booth to engage in political activity they're going to allow you to put up certain signs but if you want to tell people to get together in mass action then they're going to punish you ten thousand dollars worth and they did the same thing two years ago for the mass september 15th 2007 march on washington where they find the answer coalition more than fifty thousand dollars so we're fighting those fines right now. Those fines are currently uh, administrative hearings. But separate from that, because the law itself is completely unconstitutionally and facially unsound, we've gone into federal court in the District of Columbia to try and strike down that law. Because we think that everyone in this city and everyone around the country should be able to get the word out without getting punished by the government and threatened with bankruptcy.